this is what's happening now in Russia. We have, um, you know, <clears throat> skyscrapers. And I was just like in a place like that yesterday. Uh, and I wanted to rent for one night just so I could film it from the top floor. Uh, and I'll, anyway, it, it just turned out sour for me. I even paid a deposit. I got the deposit back less 20%. Uh, anyway, it, it, it's a hellhole. I felt like vomiting there. I was there yesterday to get my paperwork for my driver's license in a very similar 40, 50 story high. You know, obviously half of the people are facing north. Half the people are facing south. It's just fucking chaos and insanity is an understatement. Then these people uh, live like that for nine months of the year in our country. And then during summertime, they go and do the American suburbia thing. Uh, the good news, there is no building codes, so you can do what you want. Bad news is that they repeat the same insanity just horizontally. And, uh, and then we have the villages. You can get a home and one hectare of land for $2,000. The problem with villages is that whoever is left there, is kind of like very um, judgmental of the newcomers. Yeah, they've been there for their whole life and new people are coming and it's like, why are you not milking cows and working the land so hard like we are and you're making more money than we are? So I've experienced two, do two dogs being shot in one village and in another village, another guy tried to, well, he didn't shoot me, but he shot in the air to scare me. Now, Russia is super safe. It's the safest country on earth. Uh, but this did happen to me. So it's not like it just, it just, yeah, it's, 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 it's not the uh, integrating into villages is not a good idea, but the good news is the electricity is run there and the roads are run there. The bad news is they are all, uh, you know, uh, who, there's lots of abandoned villages. There's 40,000 abandoned villages that we could literally take over with no money, very little money. And we could buy land. The problem is obviously that to get citizenship, uh, you know, you need land is not a problem in Russia. As I said, a home that you might need five grand to renovate uh, and a livable home with five grand renovation uh, and a piece of one hectare of land will cost you three thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. So, you know, land is not a problem. The problem is getting citizenship for you guys. And uh, uh, and that's another story. That you either fit a list of professions, then you get it fast. Or if you don't fit a list of professions, uh, you can invest into a business or property for like big money, like $250,000, $300,000. But I'm not, this conversation is not about Russia. I'm just giving you what it is. But once you hear land is, you know, whatever. Um. So we ha we want to take the best of the eco villages like Oroville here and communal things and co housing, um, but leave all the dogmas behind. You know, such as we all have to walk around holding hands and dinners on Sundays and <laughs> other other forced things. Uh, you know, um, but we do want some rules. A good rule, for example, would be your dogs are not going to be barking for like all the time. You know, if you're leaving and you're leaving your dog there and it's barking, you have two choices. You either, uh, you know, move your dog out. Uh, I'm talking about extensive barking for one night, two nights, three nights, a week, two weeks. And it's like, OK, the dog is out. Or you do an operation for the dog that you remove its voice box. Sounds scary. Sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Tough luck. <laughs> uh, I love dogs, but you know, if I'm going to leave my dog barking for two weeks on end, uh, you know what I mean? It's just not on. So we do need some rules, but we also want to be um, not, I don't know, there's eco villages, I find there are too many rules, but there's also, we need, we want to take the best of them. There's good geometries, obviously. There is a sect I lived in for two months. They made an amazing story up in Siberia. Uh, also, land is not um, owned, like up on top of the mountain here where you see. They've made beautiful. Uh, they, it's like amazing. They made sacred geometry. They've got the main leader who claimed himself as Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, sorry, Lord. 
But, um, you know, that's what he's sitting in jail. They're still going. There's used to be 10,000 people or 5,000 people. Um, what, uh, so some problems that I've seen is that I've experienced, I've been there four times, is um, this is the largest, I could say, eco-village on the planet, if you want to call it eco-village or sect, whatever. So uh, the problem is that, like, if you're not up performing and doing what the community wants that they kind of ask you to move down and they might trade your house which you've been building your whole life for another home in the village that somebody else built and that person will move up into your home and you know and you kind of have no choice in that you know what i mean uh, i mean you do have a choice you can stand your ground but then you'll be kind of isolated and and uh, not loved which is the most terrible thing when you are living with like hundred families up on top of the mountain so that's the top top and then surrounding this is um uh, villages um uh, villages uh, uh that you can obviously buy private property um like i showed you villages but you know with nice homes and so on um so obviously build around a, a, a cult um and they believe in the leader. Uh, could we just switch off the microphones, please, please, please? I'm not going to be long. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, can you guys still see the screen? Yeah. Keep yep. Going. Yeah, it's there. So, so, so the the big downfall that I saw is in their third commandment, which states a lie in the name of good. So, if you think you're doing good, you can lie. Lie is accepted, and under that can be hidden anything, such as that this guy claim, claims himself as Jesus Christ, uh, as the second coming. Anyway, so whatever, uh, that's what they've done. Sacred geometry, beautiful. Uh, you can investigate. We have um, Venus Project, Jacques Fresco, amazing concept, but in 102 years of his life, Jacques Fresco couldn't uh, do it. You know what I mean? Very expensive. Although we do want to take some ideas from here, like his suburbia ideas, certain centers. I definitely think there is something. Um his homes are obviously uh, designed in a way that can be mass produced, uh, such as the extrusion method and so on. Apple headquarters used his design. Uh, and uh, uh, then I have this eco village concept that I drew with Paul Richardson 120 hectares, uh, 40, uh, 4,000 square meters. Da -da 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 -da. There's the plots 4,000 square, one acre, one acre, one acre, one acre, one acre. Seven Are you like advancing through uh, slides? Sorry, because we're still looking at the Siberia one. Oh, <clears throat> hold on. Yeah, I am. I am uh, advancing through slides. Okay. <laughs> Can you see this new slide? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we got uh, one acre, one acre, one acre, uh, communal plot, communal land, communal land, two schools, uh, hobbits, uh, hobbit uh, master craftsmen, a permaculture center here with all the garden beds, festival ground, theater, labyrinth, uh, apple orchard was apple cafe, apple pies, apple pancakes, apple everything, and lots of little domes to hire. So lots of little micro businesses and, uh, you know, there's a conference center, there is a market as an entrance and all the roads obviously down on contour line, <laughs> Earthship Hotel up here. And this is obviously a hill, another hill. So all these objects are uh, on hills and then, you know, so that's a good idea and that should definitely uh, give us something to pay forward. Now, this part of Russia is very flat from St. Petersburg to Moscow to down even south to Ural Mountains is like flat. So if it's flat, you can obviously apply a different because there's not much contour lines to kick off. Yeah. So we can apply a certain matrix, uh, you know, yeah, a matrix could be hexagons or in this case, here is a 12 pointed, four pointed and um, 
you know so an example would be like if we're and and that matrix can be applied to low story and a slightly higher story what i mean by higher story i talk about maybe a three 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 um uh, floor high um, um block of flats for example uh with tall greenhouses like uh, earthship i'll show you just now uh, and i just threw some objects here it looks messy and it's not going to be like that but what I wanted to show you is that 33, so that's a hectare, yeah? That's 54 meters, the, the 12 pointed shape is 54 meters. The six, the hexagon is 25 by 25 and the square is 15 by 15. What I wanna show you here is right, so let's say this is our version of sub suburbia part, okay? So this would be the hexagon would be the private property, 25 by 25 meters. So it's not a lot, it's what, 450, uh odd square meters so uh, so one twentieth of a hectare is in private property for a person um the good news here is the parking lot is shared which is nice i think uh the um, another square could be the heating and cooling unit that sends hot and cold that's for example hot water around underneath the or next to the road and heats up all these units because right now each home heats themselves separately, which is a mess. There could be a, a unit for like four greenhouses, like passive greenhouses. So, you know, that are like centrally either heated or, um, you, you know what I mean? So so if you want to do the greenhouse planting, like specifically for like things that you can't grow in winter, um, you would come here and that would be like organized and you'd have your own lot, similar to in England, actually. Uh, it's just an idea. I'm not saying that that's how it will be. I'm just, yeah. And then in this, we've got obviously one road, single lane with little overtake, little shapes. If two cars get, you know, in, in the way, uh, we have maybe one central production space, like where, let, let, let's just say that uh, the first business we start is a business of bioarchitecture construction company. Let's just say, okay. So we don't actually all have to live actually together, but let's say on our land here, we decide to put a 3D printer and a, a workshop to generate homes. Because the key feature of this town um, uh, uh, is that we, we want to take manufacturing, we want to take uh, uh, healing like yoga and stuff and all of that. So like a space for meditations and whatever and uh, ecotourism, okay? Like Airbnb pods, like wherever, okay? So those three components was obviously the permaculture of people, planet, profit. That's the key thing. So right now what happens, people live in the city and they travel, they live in the city because their work is there. We want to bring our work to us. So in an example of um, construction business, we could have one 3D printer. We all invest into this business together, uh, time, money, and uh, skills. And we start, you know, we start building off there. As I said, we don't have to all live together. We could be living on separate plots further away, but that's, for example, where we come and work, for example. Then in the center could be a, a medicinal herb garden with a pond, and 33% of a hectare is left in forestry, agroforestry, or food forest, but basically left in forest or grown in forest. So natural habitat, uh, which is nice. It gives us an, a border all around. Um, uh, workshops could be also made with little vaults, quick, quick to erect vaults I'll show you just now. And, um, and you know, and people can just come and, not a co-housing, but can be nearby and working, but can also have separate spaces, separate rooms, separate workshops, for example. Okay. Uh, so that's one hectare. Here I want to show you on the, uh, so the sun is from this front. On the back side, away from the sun, is our blocks of flats. The one block of flats I already shown you, the three story that takes a hexagon and a square, for example. And this is another block of flats where in cold climate, uh, you could have things a bit stacked, very strong support structure in the back. Obviously it needs to be severely engineered, but everybody gets a nice greenhouse of three meter deep. And the whole block of flats runs like that, like, like a hexagon square, hexagon square, like, like, you know, and they can have spaces between them, for example. Okay, just an idea. 
Um, so th th there's something that was built uh, in uh, Canada, uh, Habitat 67, um, and then he's also designing in China. So definitely green architecture is very popular, but it's not possible in cold climate. It looks lovely, but it's not possible in cold climate because obviously, you know, weather, you know, it all dies and, and stuff, but it's very beautiful and people do want uh, trees and not everybody wants to live in their own homes. Like I'm living in a flat right now. I'm happy. I don't have to bother about like this, that and the other, and I can go for walks and, you know, people are different. So obviously I'm not saying we need to have skyscrapers. I've already shown you what type of architecture, if it's a tall tall building it will be like three four five story highs at max like that that's a side view yeah but uh not nothing like that we don't want to go into billions and trillions of dollars you know what i mean we we, we want to be realistic and something that's doable uh and buildable yeah um i'm a realist so here the balconies and cold climate could be covered in etfe which is a 50-year life warranty or uh, you know, timber and or uh, metal and glass, whatever, you know, just some details. ETFE is very strong, um, long lasting Eden project. So we want to have little oases on each balcony. So although we're living in a flat, we have a little oasis in each balcony. It's just an idea. Arco Sainti, amazing concept from America, Paolo Soleri, uh, great, pro uh, amazing. I definitely see an urban like urban centers like that where we could manufacture make make stuff you know like workshop space look at that yoga space look at that vault the giant vault in the back um incredible i really love it so what i'm trying to say is that we want to up the density uh we don't want to go like low density like homesteading we, we don't want to go low density like uh, one acre per family this is not what this is about. Although those people that do want large pieces of land, welcome to buy nearby or, you know, or even take a hectare if they've shown that, you know, they can handle a hectare. You know what I mean? In 12 years that I was in South Africa, I was only able to handle a quarter of a hectare with a $100,000 investment. So <laughs> I'm a realist. Um, and that's why half a half. One twentieth of an a uh, hectare is what what I'm saying, but it could be bigger. You could, one could take a hexagon and a square, for example, and up it by another what to six hundred square meters, uh, seven hundred square meters. Anyway, Paolo Soleri, all these pictures you see is eight percent of his final vision. His final vision was of town for fifty thousand people. I've sent you a book. Uh, please scroll through it. I'm starting to read it myself. It's pretty good. So 40,000 people come and visit it every year. Uh, amazing vaults, uh, all built with a silt casting method by students with no money. They came and people paid to build the city and they still pay to maintain and, and continue building the city. And obviously the, the sale of their bells, the sale of their bells, they make bra beautiful brass bells. Um, you know, so that's how they generate income to continue the city. 80 people live there. Uh, we, we want to obviously pick up on this model, or I'd like to. I think it's a great model because it's got like flats, but it's really nice. It's like it's an I was there. It's really it's nice. Like it, it's really nice. So I think one could definitely look at this, at this as inspiration. They also take heat from the greenhouse and they send it underneath the city. So there's definitely some cool earthship ideas. Um, uh, another good concept is obviously the uh, um, Solar Living Institute, but it closed. We need to investigate why it closed. But because it didn't have a community around it of all the build, strict building codes that couldn't really, I don't know, I don't know. You know, they pumped, they pumped a lot of money into it. They built a conference center, I also was there. It's a, a John Schaffer, uh, amazing, amazing. It was really beautiful. I'm sure some of you guys have been in Oregon, their Solar Living Institute. It's really, really cool, but it closed down that they sold it. So it didn't... Uh, this, yeah, this is in Mendocino County in California. I've been four years in a row to the permaculture convergence there and helped build a hempcrete thing for an aqua, aquaponics demonstration site that was there, right, right by the pond there in the middle. 
Exactly. So so we want to take some of these ideas and ideas are obviously, again, sun, solar facing architecture. They're made with straw bales. I think it's a great concept. So we want to take some of these ideas and incorporate them and make them buildable. And, you know, um, obviously, you know about bamboo and timber is very cheap in our country. Bamboo is not really available. But if we go like, you know, Mexico, maybe, I don't know, you know. So we're obviously looking for some alternative geometries. Uh, and here is another business idea. So let's say like a beekeeper comes to us. I'm just saying, just, just an idea. And uh, he says, guys, I want to be with you. And then we say, okay, cool. We give him one of those uh, cells, uh, uh, you know, one, one of these hectares, for example. And we help him to develop this as a micro business. So our, our team of builders, for example, builds him some pods. We burn the bags to create like a beehive effect, yellow, black, whatever, white. We make little beehives if we want, cool little village. Our marketing team helps to kickstart this business. The same marketing team that sells the property, uh, uh, the properties and, and, and so on. So we have one marketing team that kind of kickstarts all the businesses that join. It's a very clean, transparent structure. A certain percentage goes to the marketing team. A certain percentage, for example, goes into uh, the city for upkeeping and maintaining roads and so on. And of course, a certain percentage will go to the master beekeeper, uh, and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, but it's very clean, transparent structure. A beekeeper would be struggling to kickstart his own business with, with 40 domes. You know, um, and in domes, well, it could be some bee healing, like meditations. You can also sleep on beds that bees hum underneath, which is the guy who translated Anastasia books. He builds those beehives where you can lie on top of them and you have the whole humming experience at what, $500 or $50 now. I don't know what the rate is, but, you know, so there's a whole bee story. Ladies inside could uh, decorate, make curtains, whatever, make it beautiful. And the whole business kick starts and people who participate benefit. End of story. And it's a clean, transparent structure, uh, uh, you know, with one marketing team that eventually grows, that kickstarts all the different businesses. Like somebody else comes and says, guys, I want to come join you. I, uh, I, I'm a bamboo master, let's say, and we're building this thing in Mexico on Paraguay. I don't know, you know, or... Um, and he wants to build some Airbnb pods. Somebody else wants to have a, um, a retreat center, for example. And, you know, and that whole business comes together. And, you know, permaculturist from our, from, uh, our town or external comes in and digs the ponds with the excavator. And, you know, the whole business kickstarts. Once again, everybody involved benefits on a clean, transparent structure uh, that, is fair um <clears throat> my pictures of ferro cement tricky but beautiful again for you know ecotourism you remember you want things pretty so why not somebody else who wants another idea with ferro cement go for it you know uh eventually our construction company will have a 3d printer and we can start printing things uh, accelerate the, the construction process the ideas are endless. Here's a structure that can be put together in one day using a small printer that pre-prints these pieces and put together on formwork. Formwork gets removed and then this whole thing can be buried. I'll show you a separate picture just now. I didn't put a slide in. And there is my quick sketch of this house. Again, it's more like very cold architecture. Geodesic dome here, uh, uh, then glazing, glazing before geodesic, then geodesic, then obviously ETFE or whatever. Uh, it's just ideas, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, somebody else like a bricklayer comes in and he wants to start his own little, um, you know, something or, or part of our construction company, whatever, you know, go for it, you know. So it all depends which country we go, like Mexico has got a lot of craftsmen, brick layers, we can combine with technology like uh, Fologram software that shows you where the bricks go. And then we don't have to be masters to build this kind of thing. Or we get into technology and we uh, print these, these, these pieces and we don't have to deal with bricks. So it's really up in the air. It all depends on who comes in into the team and what they want to do. 
Um, but realistically, until we're starting, here is a simple idea from Carl Earth. And I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but I just want to reiterate, you know, uh, simple walls with bags, uh, uh, one layer of mesh, and boom, you have a vault in, you pour a roof in one day. Uh, so again, something realistic, doable, uh, not uh, um, super expensive, in fact, very cheap. We invest into good form work and we build like, I don't know, lots of these. And these can be trapezoid form as well. They don't have to be rectangles, they can be trapezoid. So they could follow a circle like I've shown you in the group. Um, uh, again, you know, color is very labor intensive, but the vaults are cool. The vaults is the previous slide. There, there are two vaults there. One there. Let me just see if there's any uh, people. Oh, yeah, there are. Um, is the slide still open? Yes. Okay. And obviously, some ideas on flow forms. Very cool to activate water. Rainbows. Keith. Keith. Erkstein, I spoke to him, amazing. So we want to create architecture that's close to temple, you know, so people feel good, there's good ventilation, there's passive, all that stuff we've been, we all want, we, we, we're we going to implement it. Water, you know, is my passion, John Todd. Um, yeah, and then that picture that I wanted to show you with the burial, you remember the printed pieces? Um, uh, is uh, This is uh, from... Uh, uh, yeah, so 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 those pieces get, get pieces get printed, put together, and then it gets covered by an excavator. Uh, the beauty about that method, it can be done very quickly. The, these guys built took six years to build their home. It's amazing, but temperature stable. But six years is just not. It, it's just insanity. So that's kind of it, and uh, <clears throat> I want to hear from you guys. Like, what are your ideas? Uh, what What are you feeling? How can you help? And so on. So, uh, Michael, do you want to go for it? Like, quick, like three, five minutes, you know, just introduce yourself. If you've got nothing to say, then, you know, whatever, move on. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I really appreciate the uh, gathering all the information together. You know, I've been... Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've basically been thinking about how to create this kind of thing for since I was 18. And I've just been gathering all the trade skills I could because I, I didn't see a realistic way to really just go and do something like this, especially without having, you know, skills. So since then, I've been learning carpentry and all kinds of it ends up leading to all kinds of trades work. I've done like custom boat work where we like uh, fiberglass, carbon fiber, vacuum form that I spent a few years doing that. And, you know, just so I've just been gathering like a lot of different skills and getting to a um, not just a hobby level, but saying working a few years with custom fiberglass until the dust, you know, I had to leave because of the dust and then concrete similar. I worked on a very high level with interior residential concrete and making uh, countertops and like we can cast sinks and stuff. And um, again, you know, just I try to jump around for to avoid the dust. My main thing is I work with forestry. I work with trees. So I'm a tree climber. Um, yeah, I do planting and all that type of stuff, too. But but mainly right now I'm focusing on fine pruning and climbing. Um, you know, I remove a lot of branches near houses and stuff, but also create light. And really, I've been yeah, kind of combining, you know, classic forestry, you're just removing certain trees. It's kind of either the tree stays or goes. And now I'm kind of bringing pruning techniques into forestry to create like a next level of how cared for like selective thinning can be. So that's kind of that's my current passion is is working with um, forestry. And I guess also I've just I've just done a lot of farming and gardening. I've taken care of goats and planted, you know, third acre gardens and maintained them and run volunteer things. I was involved in um, community gardening. Other side of this that I think that has been really important to me is when I got into gardening, um, just realizing like with land, you know, you start investing in soil building and all these things. And we were, you know, if you're renting a farmland and I've seen it for other friends too, where they might have to move along to a new farm. So I got really interested in trusts 
and land trusts. And so I've been using trusts for the last 10 years to run all of my business. I run basically do private um, business. Right now, all of my tree people I work with are become members of a private association. So we have a member to member um, work so that, um, yeah, basically just, so I've, I've just become very um, comfortable and with using these kind of um, relationships, um, you know, so basically studying and work with, I guess the other thing that's kind of major, I, I opened a um, grocery store, like a local food grocery store and did that for a few years. After getting out of farming, I was thinking, how are people going to actually make money with this? My friends who are farming are struggling. They have to go to the farmer's market. So I opened like a permanent farmer's market with produce from, you know, about 20 different farmers and also groceries. We had a cafe. We did the whole thing as a cooperative. So we did it as a worker cooperative. So that's another area where, you know, I've been to some conferences and stuff and something that I would gladly offer to something like this is, you know, when you're talking about that idea with the beekeeper and how there's all these different people involved, basically I've, you know, learned what models are used by the world's biggest worker cooperatives and adapted them and learned how how that kind of thing can be arranged, where people are keeping track of how much they've put into it, whether it's they've done a lot of work or a little work and coming up with fair ways to create profit sharing arrangements, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of that's really like the, the sum of the skills yeah. that I bring to the table there. Awesome. And what's your, uh, are you willing to come to Russia or you're willing to do this in Mexico or you just want to put in and you don't know where it's going to happen? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, a bit of both. I mean, it's, it's really interesting because my, one of my son's best friends just moved to that area called like Southern Russia and is in this beautiful school there where they're, he's learning the Shashka and like the same, you know, the, the, Cossack Sabre and my son's learning Cossack Sabre. So there's a lot of interest there for us just as a family that we have our friends just moved there and telling us beautiful. We love it so much. And so, you know, it's become interesting that I'm like, well, oh, I don't know. You know, um, part of my roots are from Eastern Europe, uh, like more what's now in Ukraine. So I have a lot of draw towards generally the area um, and also Mexico. I love Mexico. And we were just there. Um, uh over the winter and i just i'm totally in love with that concept too you know so um yeah i i'm i'm very like this is my life's work too you know like to find how to create build uh move forward so i'm in for the long haul you know it's not just for me but it's like a total passion you know all right okay awesome thank you uh if tommy yeah. You want to share? Sure. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, well, hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have a workshop and I can weld and work with wood and fiber and no uh, and glass fiber and i'm stuck here because i have a blusser here and i i want to stay in mexico but if you need some cost materials or information of this location i can what country in sorry what country in i am in mexico 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 city of mexico wow Wow. <laughs> in I and yeah, I think in in a in a beginning I want to go out of the city, you know, nah, nah, nah. but I then I hope if if the city only consume and consume and consume, only if you run to away the city gonna get you. I fall in love with the the your idea of city, because if we turn the city in an element, we can help and heal the water and don't produce. Oh, it's it's amazing and it's a game changer. Yeah. And 
and I am dedicated to make huertos urbanos, a human agriculture, for for this reason, no, because I I want to contribute to change that logic, and that's all. No? I, That's all. Um, Amazing. But this is, this is information, it's the cost of materials, some investigation units from Mexico, I can investigate that. Right. Mexico is coming up. I uh, spoke to a guy yesterday from Mexico um, about um, doing that uh, reciprocal roof uh, design for him. Uh, he, he's from UK, but they bought land in Mexico. And today I spoke to a lady from Mexico who is about to be given uh, possibly a hectare of land in a very beautiful place by the sea um, where we can start something. If, you know, the guy will give it if he can see uh, uh, that we can do it and he'll give us the land for free. It's three kilometers uh, uh, from, uh, you know, from the ocean. So it's very nice. The land's gone up from $2,000 a hectare to $100,000 a hectare in about six years. So yeah, it's crazy. Um, awesome. So Mexico, we have somebody already on the ground. That is great, Tommy. Um, yeah. Keegan, Kig do you want to share a little? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm a builder with my dad since childhood. Uh, you know, in the, you know, mainstream what everyone is doing here in California, and uh, then I got into permaculture in 2012 and did you know some natural building there but with the big focus on you know on designing permaculture gardens and particularly uh you know building community um i've done a lot of just work exchange uh relationships like volunteering on all kinds of organic farms and seeing you know different people's methods and uh you know i'm passionate about uh exchange with culture and so learning different languages and um Right now, my big focus is on uh, like creating a, a movement that's about movement freedom. So um, right now I'm, I'm looking at uh, designing a camp at the Gathering of Tribes in Portugal this September. And uh, that's to be to create a space that's for people to share their different movement modalities or that whether that's like dance or martial arts. I have a big martial arts background. <laughs> Wow. Um, and so, but the other, the other side of that is like creating a world where we're free to move about, you know, as, as basically global citizens, you know, and, in and, and being, you know, master of own destiny and be able to go to a project and be, have a home there and then go to another one when we feel like it. Um, so that's, that's my big vision for like creating freedom where people can, you know, come and participate and be a part of something and then go somewhere else and do something. Yeah. I want to chime, I want to chime in on that. I think what you've touched on is a very good idea because not everybody wants to be rooted to one place. And let's, let's imagine we have one of these things in Mexico and one of these things in Russia. And uh, you have a home and I have a home and they've got very similar structures of uh, businesses and layouts, for example. So it's easy to fit in. So you say, I want to travel to Russia and work the business here and do some things here. And we exchange and we actually live in each other's homes like couch surfing. I think it's a fantastic idea. Thank you, Keegan. Sorry, I just wanted to chime in. Carry on. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. And so like, I've had a lot of different experiences with that kind of, of arrangement. And so I'd be look, I'd be, you know, um, at this point equipped to manage something like that. Uh, and, you know, looking into like tokenize uh, assets so that people can actually earn, um, like not only like earn shared ownership, but like earn clout within a certain community. So if they are more invested than their, you know, what they want to see done has more, um, uh, they have more clout, you know. What does um, more clout mean? 
meaning like they their vote is worth more because they're further invested into a certain project. And so creating a way where we can keep track of how people are different are invested, I think, is really um, the tool that we need to facilitate, you know, a greater freedom people can, you know, uh, collaborate and contribute to the projects that they care about and, and then spread themselves over different projects based on what they're feeling to do, you know. Nice, nice. And that system yeah. can also track uh, or if people want to barter like like the dollar value, for example. So, um, you know, I'm just asking you, can it? So it can track things. So, Yeah, um, there's different ones. Like I connected with a, a guy who has a community in Colorado and he has this thing called Secure Agora. Um, and that is based in Bitcoin. So it keeps track of things and the value of Bitcoin. Um, and you can basically create a token for your village project um, so we can have a ledger. But then if people want to get paid out, they actually would get paid in Bitcoin. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you finished? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not like a big tech uh, guy, but I, I'm, you know, my whole thing is looking at the invisible structures of, you know, they call it in, in, in permaculture is like designing our relationships in such a way where it's not just like, uh, you know, 90% of the people feel like they're slaves <laughs> to to somebody's you know, to somebody else's agenda um and then creating you know a way of counsel to 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 really integrate different perspectives and I'll allow everyone's voice to be honored um so that's that's what I have to focus on and contribute and obviously I'm super inspired by your designs and I want to um learn more about you know how we can create passive so you know passive homes and beauty in our communities so, yeah, so and, and you do understand that the whole thing is made of lots of little micro businesses but your structure what you're saying will organize it so it's not chaotic so somebody does somebody doesn't build something that doesn't align with the whole thing on some pink dildo sticking out so the council is much needed and your work is really really will be appreciated just just know that i hear you and it's much needed there because imagine somebody builds a pink dildo and by pink dildo, I mean, builds a building that's put sewage out into our rivers, uh, uh, into our water that we swim in, you know, that kind of thing. So there definitely needs to be some structure and, and a council. So thank you for bringing that yeah, up. And, yeah. And if we don't like, if we don't do that um, self-government ourselves, then, you know, we have these bigger organizations coming to do it for us, which we, you know, don't want really. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Joseph, you have your hand up. А теперь обращение к Ване Супермену два два восемь. Хоть я роста мал. Okay, Joseph seems like uh, he's not on the same page. Okay, he's banned. Second, Joseph. Let's see if he uh that's yeah anyway um lisa do you want to share uh jay do you want to share hi, oh, hi Losha. Hi, I'm, on, uh, I'm on public transit right now so um i'm listening and when i get to a stop that i can get off at I will talk to you guys, okay? So I'm going to mute again and put you back in my pocket. Okay, cool. Thank Sorry. You. All good. Uh, Jay? Hi, sorry. I just logged in right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Jay, we're talking about building a new city on Earth. Uh, do you have any ideas you want to share or anything you 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 know that uh, can help new city uh i i had an idea about like creating like a circular economy through uh like like trying to like first create a housing for homeless people and with with them like train them to create or, or first train them to uh, 
grow like food forest first and with their help uh, create housing for retirement home and then with the people from retirement home like get there with the help of their resources uh, create uh, orphanages mm -hmm. and and animal shelter so it kind of like they can kind of adopt each other Jay, at the same time yeah question uh, very good ideas where do we get the money for homeless shelter, training them, permaculture, and retirement homes? Where's the economics in this? I'm sorry. Where will we get? The, yeah, where will we get the money for this? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is that what you're asking? That's exactly what I'm asking. I don't know yet. Okay. But, because we need yeah. to understand that our model. Thanks, Jay. Thanks so much. Uh, we need to understand that uh, we can have incredible ideas of saving the world, and I'm all there with people, planet, profit. People, planet, very important parts. But we have to have the economics hard integrated uh, into the structure, because without economics, uh, just shit hits the fan. Uh, al although I'm learning myself how to calm down, even if I don't have money, uh, and trust God and I'm praying every day but at the same time God told us you know pray but tie your camel you know what I mean so you know we gotta look at economics as uh, an integral part of this whole thing that's why I said like uh, it's a micro business let, let's just say and I'll hand over carry on afterwards okay but let's say we start with a bioarchitecture construction company because you all agree that without a construction company, we actually can't build anything, okay? It's just a fact. We're not going to shit homes out of our asses, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it, it needs to be a bioarchitecture construction company. And let's just say the second business that we could invite or look for, um, and it could be other businesses parallel, you know, uh, like the beekeeper guy, you know, whoever comes, comes, you know, we'll open our hands. But if I were to like think, um, you know, I would say, okay, well, what can construction company, you know, collaborate with? And let's just say somebody is uh, or um, grows flaxseed or hemp. Let's just say, okay. And they have a shitload of waste that we could press into bricks. That would be a nice collaboration. Um, you know, that's just an um, idea. Keep can I say something? Because I have to go in a minute, but um, Jay mentioned the animal shelters and that's like something that I am also passionate about. And I see that like creating like a wildlife um, zone uh, in, in, a, in a species could live in a habitat um, is something of value that could be looked at from like an uh, ecotourism standpoint as well. Um, you know, we can create a, some kind of sanctuary to protect a species that needs that. And then people can come and check it out and it could be part of the whole thing. Um, Animal shelter idea. came up twice today. First of all, we've just donated half a hectare with a home, that village home to an animal shelter was like 120 dogs. We just donated that piece of land to them. And secondly, the guy who wants to possibly give us land in Mexico is also building an animal shelter. And I also thought that could be integrated in a way to heal people and to heal the animals as an integral part. So we're there, Jay, with the animal shelter. And Keegan, I hear you. I don't want to sound like a hard economic uh, bastard, but you hear me as well, that if we start with animal shelter and homeless and retirement homes, Retirement homes, good, that we could maybe build a few homes to sell, to generate income, to kickstart uh, some other business, you know, uh, but economics are important parts. Thanks, Keegan. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Good, good thoughts. I'm sorry I have to go now, but you, no, you don't, don't worry. Thanks for coming in and we'll keep you in mind for, you know, plug in when there'll be more brainstorm sessions. So plug in. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Um, Sergey, uh, uh, do you want to switch? Oh, sorry, uh, Iktomi. Ah, 
for uh, in the same problem of economics, we are in a urban ambient and for maintain the materials of, of the workshop because develop things is expensive. Is we little microorganisms uh, microorganisms to fertilize the and we can do a, a shampoo a, a, to clean the floors. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm just going to switch off your video because your sound is going. But just leave your audio and maybe move back to your room where you had a, a good internet connection. Okay, okay. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll... So basically, you're saying we uh, shampoos and soaps and all of that, yeah? Yeah. yeah. No, we lost. Ah. We lost him. Uh. Uh. If, yeah, Iktomi. Okay. Um, Ready? You yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, go for it. You can write my video. Uh, no, I think leave your video off because your your internet is slow right now. Well, I produce microorganism in a bottle of twenty liters of water, mm -hmm. and this a process that don't require my time to happen. I only start the the mix and mm -hmm. one man, one month after I I put in bottles mm -hmm. and sticker and sell. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have resources in in the case where you plant, produce tea or only make a a swimming pool and release this service to to capitalize the project i think gonna be good ideas okay 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 cool uh, uh yeah so there's a million other businesses we can start but as i said a yeah. good a, a good thing that to start is something that can work together and amplify really fast maybe a, a bioarchitecture construction company and immediately a client with a healing center who wants 30 domes or 30 rooms to be built. Then a bioarchitecture company kickstarts, builds them the stuff, they get the income and it's like, it's a good relationship, you know? Then a permaculture landscape, people could come in next, they could do the land, uh, make it nice, you know, with plants and trees and flowers, and they could be already a nice synergy there. Then a construction company and a landscape company, a landscape designers could work really well together. It's just some ideas of how I see it starting, but obviously, um, I don't know all the answers, and uh, um, you know, we, but but we do want to. Do, it's a designed successful story it's not a random uh let's just like put our call for everybody you know because obviously we're going to start with a small piece of land for example uh, not necessary it could be maybe five hectares or 10 hectares but it won't be thousand hectares because first of all it's costly then what the fuck do we do with a thousand hectares from the beginning and uh uh, yeah, so definitely if it's, we're starting with 10 hectares, inviting absolutely everybody to do whatever that we can't see as part of the greater business plan, not business plan, it's not the right word, but, you know, like a synergy, synergy strategy, like way forward, like a quantum boom, move fast forward. If, you know, we don't want like... We, 
we want to focus the first few businesses that are going to accelerate the building of the roads, building of the infrastructure, getting the electricity there, getting the place to look nice, getting some homes so people can live in them, whether it's rental or Airbnbs or, or whatever. So uh, it, it's like, th that's, I think, a priority. Once we have the roads, once we have the infrastructure, once we have some trees that, that are growing and ponds, ponds that are dug up, of course, then we can invite people to, this one wants to do that, that one wants to do another. You know, they can purchase plots of land and do their thing because also remember that by people purchasing plots of land but and moving in and doing something there very important uh, people can't just purchase land and not do anything there for years and years because then we have empty land that's just standing there like an eyesore so that's also another rule that if you're buying land that within two years or so you need to develop you need to do something with the land do you know what i mean you need to be Mm, mm, uh, I don't know, it's just an idea or you, or you sell the land to somebody else that wants to do something with the land but it's not like let's just buy land and keep it for apocalyptic to uh, uh, apocalypse one day when it's in the future because I've been to a village like that um, it's all empty and there's a one family there two hour walk kids have to walk to another family there to another side of the village because everybody took one hectare for apocalypse times and nobody lives in there and only five families out of 300 moved in and it's it's not working so i hear you uh joseph uh, do you want to uh, speak up Uh, Joseph, no. Uh, it, okay. My internet is slow. Okay. Hello, Shahala. It's Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. How about I talk? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay. I can't. I, so you can't see me because I have to hold my phone with one hand, and I got it's a sixty-five-year-old birthday cake. Good. Okay. So, um, so I'm from Canada. I'm from I'm Ontario. And I was a part, but not the executive council, kind of digs so executive committee for a, um, let's call it a, oh, what do you, what do you call these? I'm out of lack for words now. Anyway, Michael Tellinger, who I know you know, mm -hmm. we are the, we were the first, it was North Frontenac, Ontario, first township that okayed the one small, one small Mm -hmm. he, one small town. Boo -boo, boo -boo. Come on, boo -boo, come. Yeah, one small town. So they were working on this for years. And these were really dedicated people. So all I'm trying to say is how challenging this is. You want to create a little city. They were just trying to do a um, purpose-built kind of thing on a on a hundred acres kind of kind of situation. And they and they, they just couldn't do it. So I've been brainstorming since then. Like, why didn't it work out? How can it work out? So this time next year, I hope to be with involved with an awful lot of money. So my thing is, like, I'm talking probably a little more than a million. Canadian. A little more than Canadian. Um, what do I invest in? So my grandmother was Mexican. So I have a, wouldn't it be awesome if we could do something in Mexico? But I don't know, I, it just, it's just it's a little complicated for me and how we're going to get this started. But I do believe that it is possible. It is possible. But um, I don't know, Alasha, to get, to, to get independent developers involved in it and what are they going to want out of it? So, like what profits, are, if it's all about economics, what profits no, are they going to want not about out of it? It's not all about economics. And we are the ones that are going to develop it. I'm starting a bioarchitecture construction company. We have uh, Michael here who also knows uh, building. We have Iktomi here already who runs a workshop and works with ferrocement and, and various other materials. So uh, the, the, the developers, we're not going to let other developers come in uh, uh, who are going to build some ugly boxes at a million dollar pop 
that gonna <laughs> rot in 25 years that's like that's up the wrong end you know okay. what I mean? Okay. We, yep. we, we will welcome other bio architecture, permaculture inspired uh, developing companies. We're not saying we're going to be the only ones. God forbid, it is not about monopoly. And mm -hmm. uh, But, uh, you know, we want a certain level, like people who are going to build some nice arches or vaults or earthship little concepts that are certain color schemes that aligned with the nature natural colors around us all that stuff so oh. you know and so uh, well this is while this is being built where do we all live this is because i'm trying to I, again i'm a visual person and, and even though right, I, it's, do, it's, I, a, it's, it's a good question uh um the answer is if you've seen the presentation those simple cal earth bolts they're relatively uh -huh. low cost to build we could have them fan out in a circular way or in an arched way um, that, let me just show you a, a picture, hold on. Um, oh, I, really I, you're recording I, this because you're technically in my pocket. So I'm, I'm walking down a street, but listening to you. So if, but let me just, let me just show, let me just show you, let me just show you a picture and, okay. uh, and you can just look at this picture. Hold on. Uh, it's an idea. It's an uh -huh. idea. Here, it all here. starts with ideas, so I'm open yeah. to that. One form work, one form work, uh, uh, that, and you uh, pour the roof in one day over mm -hmm. one form work with one mesh, okay? Uh, okay. You can do 20, 20 rooms, uh, and you can start from both ends, and in 10 days, you can have 20 rooms. So this yeah. could be something that we could be temporary living, that I've, okay. and I'm, bra I'm brainstorming as I go. and. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and I'm bring. I'm just throwing ideas out. This could be uh, a temporary living for the permanent residents, and eventually, once the other permanent homes are built. And by the way, that shouldn't be the priority. The yeah. priority should be for people that don't have a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> who have less money should be to stay in these accommodations and to invest their money and energy into a business mm -hmm. that will generate income to pay for the permanent home. If you're okay. going to start building a permanent stunning home, there is a 90% chance that you're going to run out of money before your home is finished, unless you have a million dollars. Okay. So let me stop you right there because I'm talking about a million dollars to invest in something. Yeah. I, by choice, live in small accommodations. And I design uh, tiny homes and micro shelters because I'm one of those people that believe housing is a right, not a, not a potential, maybe you get it, maybe you don't. So I'm just trying to look at, okay, so if you say, because I don't even know how much land is. So I just say I had a million dollars today. As... <laughs> If, uh, and I remember, I, I'm the furniture designer. I'm not a. I'm. I'm not going to be one of your people that designs the, these homes. I'd love to have input, but I'm the one who designs the furniture that goes into these perfect. not ninety degree angle walls. Perfect. So, and I understand that everybody's important here. So, I, I, I I'm just thinking, if I had a million dollars, can we get a property for five hundred thousand? And then let, can you invest let, let, the let, other let, in the let, infrastructure? Let, let let me let me try and uh, share your million dollars. Just hypothetically. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just gonna switch off your sound so I can feel like I, I don't have to be rushed by and or interrupted. Okay. So let's say Lisa has a million dollars. Okay. This is a very important part of this conversation. Extremely important because without money, uh, it's like it's it's a dead end. Okay. It's a bunch of hippies smoking pot and pretending we live in utopia. And I've just watched a video in New Zealand, what how they ended up uh, that kind of eco village. I posted it in this group, by the way. Anyway, that's not our way. We are sober, we are focused, we are hyper-conscious and we understand economics, people, profit, planet. So let's say we have a client, uh, uh, not a client, uh, uh, a partner, that wants to live in something like this and wants to see it happen, has a million dollars, and she is scared that we're going to, you know, what, what, what are we going to do? Like, will, will, will she have 
will she be protected for that million dollars until the end of her days or at least you know be safe and and looked after and uh, you know that's i guess what um, a client would or partner who is putting that kind of money wants to know so what this is how i see it let's say um we have three cli three clients who want to purchase and invest i would say that then we can kickstart even with just one million dollars we can kickstart quite a lot but obviously we want to be able to sell plots of lands with homes on them and an opportunity in the business of the choice of the person who's putting in the money because we don't want to place them into a business that they don't want to do let's say lisa now shares that she's interested in doing something like interior so that's cool because interior is very much part of the bar architecture construction company because just like the curtains and the couches and the furniture it's an integral part of the whole home, whether it's an Airbnb rental, by the way, here's the first business opportunity, whether it's flipping properties that we sell, Lisa comes and decorates and places furniture, uh, um, um, you know, and, and makes some finished products. And then she sells those and she makes money of that. We make money of construction and the whole city. It's not a city, it's a little town. And, um, you know, that, uh, you know, that brings obviously revenue to the town that can then upgrade the roads, run infrastructure and so on. So if we have, well, let's say one million dollars, what we can do right now is uh, I can go to Russia with a little piece of money. I'm going anyway, look for land, bring it out here and say to the group and say, guys, I found land. 10 hectares, uh, let's say $100,000. Okay, but then we have a first problem. How does Lisa get citizenship in, in Russia? Lisa has to invest at least $300,000 into a business or property. <clears throat> so, which we can have that type of structure. Lisa invests $300,000, she gets a home and she gets land that that home stands in, in private property. And possibly given gets a share in the bio construction company, depending on what else she puts in <laughs> with uh, uh, a share of revenue and a higher share of revenue if she also puts an in interior decorating skills. So a share in revenue was just money and a share of revenue was time. That kind of thing, what I'm thinking about. If we're going to Mexico, I, I'd say that's a similar situation, but Mexico prices are different. It's, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not going to discuss it. So that's an idea. So Lisa, do you want to uh, uh, speak up? Um, and then and then and then you have you have uh, some money left that you could add into, uh, you know, further, for, for example, leave some for living expenses until the business gets going. But ultimately, you want to invest the rest of the money or whatever you can invest into something that you believe in and something that you aligned with. Does it make sense? So putting in money into something that you don't want to do or you don't believe in is just a bad idea. I don't disagree with anything you're saying. And I'm actually even a even a, 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 a more different person. I'm not looking to make a profit. This, in some respects, although it's some respects it's hard earned money, it's also gift money in terms of how I needed to get it. So I I want to do something for myself, but for the greater good. There are some of us, perhaps everybody's going to be listening to this, are ones that want to be part of something greater than themselves. So I'm not looking to make a profit. I wouldn't mind making a loan and that the that it's 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 paid off. The loan is actually paid off in the end, but it's not about me making a profit. It really isn't. It's about me being involved in something. So it, it, again, not being not being the um infrastructure trying to create a city like some of you are, I would be off the top of my head, is looking to buy a property and put the roads in. 
so that if there's zones, so to speak, you can have that zone for the for any kind of situation. So um, I don't know how else to say that, but except that, except that this is a for for over a decade now, I've believed in these these intentional communities, but they're very hard to start. And even when they're trying to start small, it's very hard for people to do it. And I'm just trying to say, how can it be done? And, and yes, it is money. Because if you don't have money, you can't even buy the land. So I know it's there has to be the money there. So I'm open to anything. You know, absolutely anything. Felicia, this but can the, start small. Uh, mm -hmm. All the beauty about the what, what I'm presenting is that it starts with just one hectare at a time. We take mm -hmm. Excel, we have a rough, a, a rough plan of what we want to do in terms of like our taller buildings. And I mean, four story and things like this and uh, things like this bottom left picture all facing uh, towards the sun uh, are going to be at the back away from the sun. Okay. Yeah, so they don't shade. Okay. We have a rough plan that the main road connecting this lot will be behind them. OK, mm -hmm. we have a rough plan that this whole thing stretches in a line, for example. OK, okay. and uh, and, you know, a rough plan of maybe a few communal zones that we're going to be, you know, interspersing communal zones could be something like this or a little bit, you know, something more interesting. But one hectare could be. Lisa's is one hectare is one hectare uh, one and, and a half, half acre? What is it acres? Two and a half, what is acres, a hectare? Two and a half acres. Two and a half. Hundred okay. By a hundred meters. Okay? okay. So this is one hectare. This white piece of paper here is one hectare. So okay. let's say Lisa says comes in with a million dollars. For her million dollars, she gets a home build and twenty five by twenty five meters given to her in private property. So she has her home, which she can sell in future or whatever. And um, the rest of the money she loans us and uh, we build one, two, maybe even three more homes, maybe, and a communal center. So $1 million, hypothetically, if depends where we do it, but in Russia would last you a, a long time. You, we could build for $1 million, probably this whole one hectare with four homes to sell a, a, a low cost, a low cost community, uh, uh, for example, Airbnb rentals, maybe 20 of these, like 10 or 15 of these little low cost things. Yeah. Maybe they mm -hmm. got up first so we could, you know, and Lisa's home goes up first, but these could go up first so we can immediately get our accommodation. But then we'll build Lisa a home. And on uh, um, one of these 25 by 25 meters, those those little vaults that I showed you, they are in these trapezoid shapes. So they take, let's say, one one of these hexagons. OK, that becomes immediately a business of rental. Immediately a business of rental. So that starts bringing in income. The rest of the money that Lisa o uh, loans us, we can build let's say one or two homes depending on how much money is left after roads and uh, uh, you know so those two homes we can sell immediately to other cool people who want to buy in but we're not restricting anybody but we do want to a little pre-screen the people at least get Lisa on a zoom call with them so she knows who her neighbors are going to be for example but ultimately, um, these two homes get built and sold at, let's say, what, 200 grand each. I'm just saying hypothetically. The 400 grand gets made. Lisa starts getting paid her loan back. We build the next home here. We sell that. And uh, some of the money we used to obviously do the permaculture and the food forest and, and, and this and that and generate the, the make a pond and make the whole place nice. That's kind of just a rough idea. And then Lisa gets her money back. Uh, we have four homes that are sold, three ho other homes that are sold besides Lisa's. There is a communal little center that's built, for example, for a business that, mm, uh, for example, Lisa wants to be involved in or not. Maybe that's a fifth home or playground for the children. You know, this is obviously up for the people that are buying in this one hectare to decide what they want here. 
if they want a little uh, um, workshop space or, you know, th that's kind of the idea. And then we start developing the next one and the next one. And once we start getting some, you know, a bit more money, we can start generating these larger structures that will, that will, we need to generate structures like that are going to act as magnets. As soon as we have a cool communal center, like Arco Scienti or something like a, a small version of it, you know, like, like even one building with a nice pool, like it could be my, my pool in the, in the greenhouse, let's say something like this, you know, we get a nice little pool with, uh, with like a tropics, but in the middle of the snow, you can all agree that that will act as a magnet to attract people who are not even living in there, but it could be a nice cool feature that people will drive towards to experience a natural pool, barley climate in the middle of uh, <clears throat> snow. So we start investing our money into magnets that generate uh, either cool rentals with our homes, <clears throat> like these bar architecture homes. Uh, but yeah, we need to generate something that people are gonna be like attracted to come like an earthship, an earthship with a five meter palm trees and bananas in the middle of the snow is going to be an at attractive magnet. Uh, yeah, uh, building an uh, orangery, orangery uh, greenhouse with, um, uh, again, like uh, Eden Project is going to be a magnet that's going to attract other people. <laughs> so as soon as we get a little bit of money rolling, um, I believe we can, uh, there'll be other people like Lisa that are going to come in and say, I want to invest into one of these units. Um, I have $5 million. I want to put into one of these and we bang out a huge dome properly designed, well-engineered with incredible plants and a natural pool that people can swim in, you know, <clears throat> this is my own design, by the way. So, so, so that's the thinking. That's the thinking, guys, but I don't have all the answers. So that that's what I'm thinking. A anybody else wants to add? Joseph, we still haven't heard from you. <coughs> so Lisa, I don't know where you fell off, but... Uh... Oh, we can't hear you. There we go. You can hear me now, yes? And in terms of Michael Tellinger, Lisa, uh, yeah, he's yeah. a cool guy. I went to his land and he's like, it's all going to work. One town revolution, rock on. It was five years ago. And I asked him one question. <clears throat> he says, what happens when people have trauma coming up and the neighbors are starting to clash and then they don't want to do this business together and then all that stuff. He says, we have it all figured out. Emotional and trauma are not a problem. We are above it and beyond it. And uh, from one point, I agree with him from one side, because that's why I moved away from intentional communities where we all have to hold hands. And if you haven't worked through a trauma, you're going to, uh, you know, spit at your neighbor towards a property development where people don't have to hold hands. But there will be opportunities and things that will create that will invite people to make barbecue together or co-housing dinner type of things once a week. <coughs> so that's that's the ideas. But when I went to Michael Tellinger's land and Michael Tellinger, if you're watching this, no um, no grudges must be taken. But every, there was weed growing everywhere. Like people were smoking, getting high everywhere. You know, and I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. I'm not saying Michael Tellinger smokes weed, like I can't comment on his behalf, but his land where he was trying to pilot this first project was ridden with marijuana. And people were high and it was smoke up in the air. You could smell it everywhere. There were bushes growing everywhere. I don't know what reality can we talk of creating? What bright future can we talk of creating if, every, if people are high? <laughs> The only point I was trying to make with Michael Tellinger is that he was trying to get that one small town off the off off the and nobody would do it. This was I think this is 2017 or 2018. I, I, went and, to his, I went to his conference that he spoke about. It. I know very well 
about Michael Challenger. I visited him a few times and he's a great guy. He phoned me about two years ago, actually, and we still couldn't connect afterwards. Anyway, so I don't, uh, uh, we need to, we need to analyze, Lisa, what happened with one small town revolution. We need to interview Michael Challenger. We need to see what's happening. We need to hear the truth. I'm prepared to speak the truth. <laughs> I'm not prepared to say that I know all the answers come and invest. I don't know all the answers. That's why I got this group to put in questions like you're asking. Just need to have some water. But carry on, I can hear you. Okay, so like what happened with Finhorn in Scotland? So they, they all, ch everything changes but that was that was something that was very successful initially it may still be successful i don't follow any of this anymore my life is very different than all of this but i'm simply saying i feel that i would i'm, I'm from toronto this is a big city and i would rather work within community and how can we work it so that it would be great to have an animal sanctuary or rescue this or or Homeless is matters is extremely important to me because I do live in live in a big city and it's it's out of control here. Um, but how I just I guess the only point I was trying to make is that this is difficult. Not that it's not impossible, just that it's difficult because I was following it so closely. But that talking trees never got off the off the off the, off the ground. But how can we get this off the ground? And I don't know how much money for land for in Mexico is compared to land in Russia. But both places, with the money that I would be investing, I would technically qualify. And like I said, when there's a will, there's a way. It's always been my thing. Um, but I just... Lisa, it'll probably yeah. start, it will most definitely start with a with a with a good proposal of uh, what your sum of money is going to give you and that would we, be great yeah yeah yeah. so you want to know that you have uh, we'll have a home that you'll have land in your name and that the place will be nice i don't even need the land in my name my little see i am such a different person than I was I you, even five but, years ago. But it's not a I'm bad idea. Looking, to, but you're right. A, a business plan that we all can sign off on is extremely important. Extremely important. But I want all of us to have housing. You know, let's take the Olympic village that they make in places. So it's earmarked for the Olympics. And when the Olympics leaves, you have all this housing. Okay. It's not a bad idea if we understand where that housing is going to go after. And quite honestly, I like the idea of a zone situation. This is the zone that's developed now. We own the, all the land. This is earmarked for the, these in terms of, I'm not speaking very well today. I I, I apologize. It's just, I've been on the run the whole day. Um, and my phone right now. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we Michael definitely understand you, Lisa. I, I I appreciate how uh, I appreciate your energy too. You know, I, I because it is it's really um, you know this is really it's really those are real questions and um, you know something that I like I mentioned I've been studying how to work with trusts because I've seen a lot of these things where you know I mean I've seen some some community situations that worked good um, when you have you know somebody they bought the land it's all very organized everybody knows who's in you know who's running it and they are good and they and the agreement works but then you know many of these things then over years maybe you know that person they get older they lose their abilities new people try to come in you know so it, it's very um, susceptible to the human dynamic and you know and, and so you know what studying this with both with trusts, but also with like cooperative and just governance models and ways to do this, you know, it just makes me think that like for, you know, these connections where it's like, okay, people have, have money. Um, I think that there are, I don't think money is really what's holding up this whole thing from happening. I think okay. it comes down to trust, you know, it comes down to how can someone who has, who has the money cooperate with a team to carry out an intention 
and have some kind of accountability for what's actually going on and not Very just say, okay, say I just invested everything I have and then now what you know um so you know so I think you know that for, for, for me I would love to continue the conversation about ideas I've had in terms of how to work with you know land trust type of concepts as well as even you know concepts where beyond just the thing of owning some land, because you know you could have the land in the name of, of a trust then where it's just, That's what I would like. you know, it's carrying on and you can, you can choose how it's, what's going to, what that land is for, you know, and, um, but, you know, but also just trusts that can be set up for certain purposes where maybe where like the animal sanctuary thing, where if people say, Hey, we have a trust that's that the animal love, trust and it also you know heals people by allowing them to come interact with horses and whatever and then people can say oh this is great i want to put some money in and i don't need to get paid back but you know but maybe they you know but it's organized they can get the newsletter they can be involved to the events you know and so there's there's a lot of abilities that we can do by just organizing yeah yeah absolutely okay a great point i agree with everything you said and imagine, so I don't know if Jay is still on the call because on a phone, I can't see who's here. But mm -hmm. so Jay has a uh, has a passion for this animal sanctuary. So imagine setting up, uh, would, you, would you just call it animal love trust? You, you said yeah, something yeah. that made me smile yeah, yeah, yeah. inside. Sure, yeah. So, but they are going to, and imagine making a, f a couple or few, three to five of Ilosha's uh, small shelters like the the one I really like is the um, the one that has the the walls. It was like, like a hobbit house. So imagine having a like, three to five Airbnbs there. Have places yeah. that uh, platforms that people want to tent setups. People want to visit these places. They really want to experience something else. And some of them actually have a lot of money. And I'm not saying, and I don't want to earmark to anybody's economic back, back, bracket. I want to uh, uh, earmark to people's passions for people have a sustainable hot, mentality hot and a helping mentality. Yeah, hot Go connected. Ahead. Hot Heart connected. connected, yeah. yeah and I just think that's where the spinning, see the magic to me, whether you call it magic or miracles, to me, they're just unexplainable incidents. Like how did that happen? Oh, it was, it was magic or oh, it was a miracle. It doesn't matter, it happened, we, think we can't explain why. And I've experienced magical situations. So I know this is possible. And I'm talking a million dollars minimum. Like I said, this was hard won, but at the same time, if it happens, then I don't need that. I don't. So I would, I would feel better if this is, if this is in fact a stairway to heaven and there's many steps to heaven, I'm going to get a couple of steps just yeah. because I don't want the money. I want to invest it into something that gives new life and it can be homeless people. It could be low income people. It can be middle age, middle age people. It can be high. In, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but I, that's great that you, you understand trust. I know very little. I've scratched the surface on trust law. So wonderful that you have some background in something like that. And this is the teamwork that that energizes me. We don't know what we're going to create. But we are going to create it. It's We are the creators. And without Lisa's uh, funds or without other people who want to invest, this thing is going to just will spin and is going to fade out because we'll continue the conversation we'll maybe have a, a meeting every two weeks just whoever comes mm -hmm. but eventually if we don't get on the ground and start building it will be like michael challenger's idea that eventually just and he had a lot of people interested he traveled the world in america and he had thousands of people who were interested in his concept and and we have who came here today that are interested in the concept so we are in a very different position to Michael Tellinger. But yes. what I know is that uh, with the help of God, with the right intention, uh, with clear uh, mindset and um, trust in each other, in trusting in ourselves and work, I've worked through a lot of trauma, a lot of crying, a lot of shit. I was crying today for 30 minutes. I was doing my first confession to god 
in my life today. And I cried and I cried. I shed so much. It's bag. cathartic. It's it, cathartic. Exactly. And only like that we can go forward. Like so imagine, imagine we have people who don't have money, but God, do they have a passion? Do they have the ability to put the time in? And and, and I think somebody was, I remember I was on the public bus, so I'm trying to listen to what some somebody, I think somebody said about, or maybe you didn't. Imagine just take you Elosh. So you you really want to be a part of this. You don't have the funds, but man, you you're strong and you got a great intention. Imagine you pay off your house in time. We build you one of your, well, now you can't be both Ailosha and Ailosha, the one that needs housing, the Ailosha who's creating housing. But imagine if we built almost like row housing in terms of right beside each other, but your smaller versions of home, there's, there's still a place that someone can call their own and they're working it off. Perfect. It's, they're all, it's all contracts. Perfect. Everything in Perfect. this world is contracts. Yeah, yeah. So Lisa, you've touched on something else. So there'll be various types of housing. The very rich people, for example, could get a hexagon 25 by 25 with a square, which is 15 mm -hmm. by 15. And that could be people who you know invest more money into it and they get a bigger home and our construction company does it for them. There could be other people who don't have money that we could build, but still make it comfortable, still make it Absolutely. Good, good sound insulation so they don't hear anybody next door. They still have their private garden and it goes into their private property. And yes, there's going to be, and some people say, I don't want a freaking house, no big or small. I'm happy to live in a flat as long as I have a balcony with that garden, like I show you. They get a flat with a, you know, and I'm, and as I said, there'll be maximum four or five stories high. We're not talking about skyscrapers. It's not a city. It's, uh, you know, so they, they get a flat. So there'll be various types of housing for various types of costs and various types of people who, people who don't want to design, who don't want to do anything, just want to put down the money and, and get property bought. And that's all they're interested in. There'll be people like Lisa who says, I want to put in the money. I want to be part of the creation. I do want a home, uh, but uh, I want to invest my money into seeing this project come to life as long as I can trust the people, as long as there's a trust formed as a, as a, as a, you know, the law of trust. And There's what... a guarantee that I won't lose my investment. I'm not talking about profits. Okay. I, I just don't want to lose the investment if it didn't need to be lost. Of course, of course. Um, poor <laughs> management. It was like, no, I don't want that. And the way to show that is that, for example, Michael and Alosha joined together already soon and build something together that we could sell and then we could show look michael and alosha already worked on a project together and we have completed it and sold it to a client and generate an income and lisa can say oh and you've got one two you already sold three homes oh my god i can trust you guys you work well together you've been together for over a year you've got a good business strategy you're making cool homes your homes are nice Sure, let me invest into Michael and Alosha. So that's how I see it happening. Because right now, Lisa doesn't know Alosha. Lisa doesn't know Michael. Michael doesn't know Alosha. We kind of feel each other, but we never work together. So and we all are putting our best foot forward. We don't know how each of us will respond when the chips are down. And that's when you really understand human nature. That's when you really understand what's in somebody's heart. So I don't know how many are on, like I said, I can only see you, Alosha, and myself. The, 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 I think there were two me fellows there from, uh, from, um, from Mexico, because I would be interested in terms of land comparison, how much land is, and, and you say, again it's just it's, it's not just, just land comparison up. lisa it's about citizenship i think citizenship in mexico and just way to live there without like insane paperwork and, and all those difficulties are far easier in mexico russia they're not giving citizenship left right and center you have to either qualify with a, a large sum of money and you buy your way in through investment into a business or property or both or you have to be a certain profession, like a teacher or this or that, and they have a list of professions on their uh, website. Uh, that's Otherwise, you have to learn the language and pass by language, and that's like just fucking difficult. 
um, and and so on and so forth. Mexico seems like an easy option, uh, but I haven't investigated what citizenship is all about. But I do feel like Mexico. Oh, it's is... easy. I've already looked up. I've already looked it up on on uh, the website. It's not. I didn't yeah. look up in Russia. Like I can get visa online. You know, you can't get easier than that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For me to get a visa in America, I have to travel to Turkey or any other country because all American consulates have closed in our country because of. Let's put it this way: in Toronto, what you get for a million dollars is a shoebox. Yeah, is a shoebox. Okay, so again, you say, "Well, Lisa, that's a big city. It's Canada." Blah blah blah. Well, well, I don't know. I I would just personally like to know if any of the Mexican citizens that are a, a part of this right this little chat. If you could say, see, send us, send us some. Hey, Lisa, this is this is what's on sale. It's no, blah blah we'll blah. Lisa, we'll investigate. I'm talking now to a person from Mexico, uh, but land has gone up. We're about to gig. If if the person who sees this video sees that we have got some good ideas and that we're willing to exactly to get com projects complete, he'll give us land. You know, uh, um, but he also wants this to be uh, a, not a floor, but a real project that uh, there's a community center. He doesn't have a hospital. People have to travel far. So he wants to see certain things being done. And um, anyway, so we, we can look into all of that. You can look up okay. land, but we don't even need to do any of it. We just need to understand that right now we have a few people that are willing to do this in Mexico. Or Russia, but let's say we're talking about Mexico for starters. Okay. I like Mexico. Um, let's say Michael says, "Cool, Alosha, I want to work with you." Uh, and uh, I have we have Lisa who says, "I'll have money in this amount of time," and we start three of us. You know, we just start building this eco machine together with uh, an economics model that. Lisa gets money back, uh, an animal sanctuary or whatever else gets built that uh, it, it, there is money for that. And there is a bill, like I'm not going to talk about animal sanctuary. You know, right now I'm focusing on a bar architecture construction company. Maybe somebody else wants to come in or Lisa wants to take half of her money and invest into a thing. It's not my thing. I want to do what I want to do. And what I want to do is a bar architecture construction company so we can kickstart building a little uh, uh, village. <laughs> Which can there was um, a couple of years ago, and I don't know where it is at. It's, it's a company in Canada. I, it could be American. And you actually buy the whole, I'm going to call it a machine because I don't know what else to call it. And it makes, uh, it separates, it's all about hemp. It's about, uh, in the end, because I think hempcrete is, is uh, I personally, I like the idea. Of, I, and I don't know if this this type of company because literally this this company will um uh what do you call it hold Lisa, your hand Lisa we to get to not, it. we don't, we don't want to get into too much details because we don't okay. know where we're going to be where the hemp even grows in Mexico I don't even know so we could spend hours talking about something that we get okay. to the land and we see a shitload of bamboo and we're saying what fucking hemp there is bamboo growing here forget hemp we're building out of bamboo Hemp doesn't grow here. It needs so much water. We don't have water. We have bamboo. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yes, yes. Uh, I think right now we don't focus on the tiny details. We need to understand if we're doing it in Mexico, who's in and uh, um, let's continue the conversation. Let's continue the conversation. Right now it was just an introductory talk. Uh, Lisa, you don't have the money yet. Uh, we don't know uh, six yeah, or seven we, months. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's continue the conversation. Let's continue the. I think we should meet in maybe two weeks. Maybe something else will come up. We'll sleep on it. Uh, jot down some notes. But ultimately, people who put in the time or money make the decision. And if it's only three or four of us and uh people who are investing then it's three and four of us it's perfect we don't need hundreds of people we don't need thousands of people in fact a small team that we can count on one hand is more than we need because it's already a lot of people dynamics and things to work out so i i'd say we 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 continue the conversation see That's where good. it goes
but I'm adamant it's my life's project. I came to Earth to build uh, uh, to build new types of towns. And I can't do it alone. I don't want to do it alone. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else wants to say? Uh, no, no. Yeah, yes. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a great idea, idea uh, make the conversation two weeks later. I do a little investigation about uh, buying uh, earth in Mexico because our different zones with different problems. No, in the north you have narco, <laughs> no, and in the coast you have exception to like a extra, uh, like a person of other country you can buy land in the beach, and but I do a little text and I send you two weeks. Mm -hmm later mm -hmm. to have that information that's all okay yeah you can send it in the group uh, uh um yeah we can yeah land land is good because land is uh, to look for land because it can give us some ideas uh um from point of land obviously it would be nice to be somewhere beautiful you know what i mean if we if we're starting buying an empty field in the middle of a desert would be just uh not a good starting point, you know? So like the land that we're looking at is close to the ocean, three kilometers only. So literally a bicycle ride to the ocean and there's infrastructure, surfing waves, lots of international people. So we can plug in. If you remember, uh, ecotourism, manufacturing, you know, healing, yoga, what, what uh, spaces, venues. So we, we wanna be somewhere where access is good airport is maybe not too far one two hours drive maximum you know like international airport so you know it's too early to speak about these things right now all, all i want to know is that there is an interest and even if we just have three four people rocking up to these meetings every two weeks and there is interest and you know, and we're not pulling this whole thing in different direction. And we all understand that by architecture company is the starting point. Because if Lisa says, I want to do bees, Michael says, I want to do uh, uh, animal sanctuary. Jay says, I want to do uh, something else. And everybody's pulling uh, this thing in different directions. We're not going to get anywhere. We need to all align to one point that bio architecture construction company and ecotourism starting point, you know, and then ecotourism can grow onto animal sanctuary and this, that, and the other. But if we're going to start with animal sanctuary, uh, we might or might not. I don't know. We might have so many philanthropists that are going to all give us a million dollars and say, guys, do your thing. Just make cool shelter for animals. Here's a billion dollars for you. I don't know. I don't know. We need to follow our hearts, listen to our dreams, and be present and continue the conversation. I'm going to shut up now. Anybody else wants to say anything before we end? Uh, can you hear me okay? This yeah, Joseph. Hi. Uh, just happy to be here. And um, really uh, like some of the things I've heard, I, uh, especially the last conversation um, with ideas that uh, Lisa brought up. Um, the uh, experience I have is um, the place that I learned a couple things from was like the um, uh, Air Creed and Hemp. Um, the, the owner of that um, place, uh, her, her idea is really altruistic. So she kind of acts as um, almost um, an experimental place. So she hosts her land for experimental type builds. Um, so she's done a, a, maybe two, three things I've seen down there. Uh, one of which was actually, uh, Alosha, I think you know uh, Paul. Um, uh, that was one of the places that uh, uh, Paul did the, uh, like the hemp, uh, like the hempel, if you will. They had one of their hempels there mm -hmm. at that facility. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and also for her, she did a a structure with him so that her thing was uh, low cost affordable housing um, and so I really like when uh, Lisa said that because um, it 
I think having a bigger vision, something beyond ourselves, uh, and incorporating that would help the sustainability um, of the group is also um, to have people come and join. So if you want to host a workshop or you want to get people involved, having some sort of bigger vision that um, allows people to come and volunteer is a good way once things get going. You know, initially, yes, I think, you know, having um, sort, of, sort of housing for the people who are involved there, let's say, if there's people who just want to volunteer and just need a place to live and some food and they're happy to just, you know, spend their time to help build the community, um, I think those things would be important. Um, long term, I think to keep things going, have an altruistic, um, you know, output, um, uh, something that would really help bring in. Um, and lastly, uh, I just want to say, Alosha, I do agree with you about the ecotourism. I think that brings in money and there's different ways we could facilitate with the, um, the building company. Um, because if we have the, the, the infrastructure as far as like the team in place, the, the tools and materials to build, we can just build what we need, but we can tailor it to what would uh, bring in revenue. So I do agree with that combination. I think that's a good combination. Um, and uh, just for my travels, I, 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 I realized that yes, having some sort of sustainable income uh, for the, uh, let's say community or for uh, the physical location, I think that's key for sustainability. So yeah, happy to be here. Um, look forward to assisting as I can. So. Th thanks, Joseph. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I forgot already what came up. Um, workshop. I think a good way to start something is to run a workshop together as a team to run an event together in Mexico. Uh, maybe not even on our land if we don't have the money for the land yet. But if we do have, uh, we you know, we run it somewhere where we could get that land. I, I don't know. I don't know because right now we don't have land, but there's a possibility of getting land. But what I'm not saying about the land right now. What I'm saying is to run a workshop that we can run it as an event to learn about each other uh, and to see, can we even work together, you know, uh, to make some money from this workshop. And if anything, spend cool two weeks together, two weeks, two weeks and probably one week prep um, and to build something, you know, as simple as, a low cost uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, I have a cool design that I'd like to, that I have, the, uh, it's like a bunker, okay? Which I think will be very popular, especially for Americans uh, and Canadians. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a vault in the center, yeah? And it's got two little domes on the sides and it's got a little greenhouse, like a geodesic, and it can be buried, obviously, up until this plate. So that could be a little small shelter, a little guy that we could do together as a workshop. And what's the square footage of that, Ilosha? I've got sizes. I can send it in the in the group. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll give you all the sizes. It's uh, what I'd like to see. I don't know. Again, what Alicia, I like you to focus on your 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 that plan. You're still working. You said you're going to have it in July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I. I Exactly. But that's not something for a workshop. That's a I understand that. I understand that. But uh, please, please don't take offense to anything I'm saying. It's just the way I think. But focus is really important. You're a designer. OK, you still have something on the pot, meaning that I can't even pronounce the name of it. That's why I'm not even trying to that you focus and get that get that completed. It yeah, has yeah. Got, you, yes, you can sell it or whatever, whatever. But that's your big thing that you've been working on for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, I'm, 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 I'm on it. I'm on it. And that's the next two months. I'm going to go laser focus on the, not this design. I'll show you. You're going to feel so much better Yeah. when that's done. Lisa, that's, thank you for your, I'll definitely do it. But we're talking about a workshop in Mexico in seven, eight, nine months time. Here is something. Uh, a bunker is a good size, 11 square meter for the greenhouse. I don't know what that is square feet. 19, 19, square meters, 19 square meters for the main room. And the domes are 
uh, eight square meters each. <clears throat> so, I'm not saying that that's going to be the workshop, but it's an idea. Uh, okay, so question to you, question, how many, if you, perfect world, how big is your team that you need to build that structure? So you have you have the people coming to the workshop need, and all that need, kind of stuff. I need, I need 20 people in probably 20? 20 people, two weeks. And we'll have a Okay, and, 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 and in terms of supplies, guesstimate it if you don't have an exact, okay, how much you think you would need to build it? I don't think more than ten, fifteen thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. That's no, a, that's why that's why I like your smaller things better for now. It, I think <laughs> ten grand would be enough, but we're talking about as a proper bunker. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, but you're going to make this workshop. Therefore, you have to have somebody's land oh, to no, say, "Yeah, the, shit, the come client, on, come on over here. We'll build it over the, here." The, the, the client who orders the structure. Um, will pay for the materials okay of course cool. they get the home at the with no labor cost it's a win-win so do you have do you do you have prospective persons that would want to do that in mexico uh, um, potentially i spoke to them last night but there is no confirmation no but uh, uh yeah but what I'm working on, my focus is this guy. I just want to wrap up this thing. Uh, is this guy? I'm working on this design. I'm putting all my energy towards developing an Earthship in this 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 design, this particular design. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, uh, I've got many designs that followed uh, that. Uh, you know, um, yeah, Larium. But I'm focusing all my energy in developing uh, this guy. So these are the, the designs that pre-followed pre quite a lot, as you can see. Uh, this is a web page I'm building, and this is this is the design that I'm putting together with um, all this system of very intricate pipe work that will heat up the berm. It's for Canadian, and uh, but I'm doing it for various climates, but I'm obviously focusing minus 40 Celsius. Yeah. minus 40 minus 50 canada and no sun no sun uh, four months of no sun so i've taken the most challenging thing ever but i will be obviously for mexico this kind of thing is possible but then the greenhouse changes from polycarbonate to shade cloth does that ever make sense shade cloth instead of polycarbonate uh, and that kind of thing so that becomes um and maybe for mexico will be more like this design because americans geodesic buckminster fuller you know what i mean people love it uh that's more like a russian thing with the onion and who who knows so you we also got to work with the culture yes I, again i'm smiling so everybody here can you just tell me this is selfish i'm, I'm prefacing it would any of you consider making the community in Canada? Again, no. I, I, no. Okay. Two million, okay, just want to know. Two million fascists moved <laughs> to fascists that slaughtered millions of people. Two million fascists moved to Canada in 1949 after World War II. They shipped all the fucking cunts into Canada and they're still there. There's a church of UPA, fascist church in Canada. No, no, God forbid. It's the most controlled fascist country in the universe. I felt it's the only country I've ever known. Although I've been to South Africa, I've been to Australia, I've been to New Canada Zealand. Canada is cursed. Get the fuck <laughs> out. And I'll say it again. Canada is cursed. Get the fuck um, out. Soon you will not be able to leave Canada if you carry no, on. No, I, uh, if you it, can, it, 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 it's getting complicated here. It's going to get yeah. so complicated, you won't be able to leave, Lisa. Get the fuck out. The sooner, the better. That's hey, I never, I never started with this. I, 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 I said to you, I would be more inviting to Mexico than Russia. That's yeah. all I've said. I just wanted because you're you're designing right. for cold climates, like you said, Canada. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Okay. 
Just yeah. wanna know, just wondering. That's all good. All right, okay. uh, Sergey, we didn't hear anything from you. Do you wanna say anything? Да, я тут, ну, я не знаю английский, я просто по эмоциям смотрю и немножко познакомился вообще с проектом. Ага. Это Сергей, мы... который с тобой переписывался сегодня днем. А, Сергей, мы э, через два дня будем на русском говорить, не переживай. Я понял, рекомендую англоязычным зайти и посмотреть на эмоции. Просто когда ты не знаешь языка, ты начинаешь понимать эмоции. Окей. Okay. So Sergey recommends that in two days we're having the same conversation with our Russian group. And he invites you guys to come and see, to see the emotions of the people and how different the Russians are and uh, just, just to experience. Uh, he doesn't know English, so he's just listening to the emotions. <laughs> Can then send it, all you, Alosha, all you got to do is send a... Um, I'll send the link. Uh, a Zoom link, yeah, exactly. If you I don't know join, Russian. You'll join, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, guys. Then we're going to wrap it up and... Um, Let's do this, uh, I don't know, we will we'll, we'll plan a meeting, don't worry, we'll plan a meeting. We can do it once a month on a full moon or new moon, something interesting, uh, and keep it going. I I'm game. If, if you guys arrive, obviously, if I'm going to be doing there alone, then I'll, you know, call it the last session. <laughs> so it's really, you are the energy, you are the people, we are all doing it together. Yes. Does Sergey, does Sergey have a, a translator with him? Can this kid, kid next time he comes on board? It, I don't think it does, or I don't think it matters. Let's stay focused. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll I'll be there, Alosha. Thanks. You know, it's great to catch up. I'm glad you pulled this together today. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Be well. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye. Later.